great are you, Lord? Great are you, yes. Lord. Great are you, Lord. Great are you, So great. to him now. Just begin to tell him how great he is. Just begin to sing your own song. Just use this time to just express his goodness, how much he means to you. Begin to just lift your voice to him now. You deserve it. You deserve our praise. We acknowledge you are great, great, great. So great, so great, so great, so great, so great, so great you are. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. No.
for us for physical healing so um yeah i'll just pray for you guys if you have need of physical healing um just just reach out with your heart in faith lord jesus i thank you that you died for us lord i thank you that it is written in isaiah 53 that you bore our sicknesses and you bore our pain and that by your stripes we are healed as confirmed in the book of matthew when you healed Peter's mother-in-law and he said this was to fulfill what was spoken by Isaiah that he bore our sicknesses and he took our pain so Lord I just thank you right now for all pain all physical sickness in the body to leave full healing right now in Jesus mighty name Lord I thank you what he's done Lord I thank you that by your blood we will be spared of the diseases as the Israelites were spared in that day by the blood of the lamb on their doorpost I thank you for healing. I command in Jesus' name right now, all pain, all sickness, leave right now. Full healing in the body, in the bones, in the ligaments, in the muscles right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Yes, um, what's amazing about serving the God that we do is that he answers us in such incredible ways. We've been in a series called Victory and what you can just came up and prayed over. That's a response to something that's going on in this room. The lyrics that we've just been singing is God paid it all. He paid it all. He paid for your suffering. He paid for your pain. He's even paid for your injuries, your sickness. He paid it all. So what you can just did it, and he prayed for us, is his putting that practice and that belief that we have in the God that we serve 
into good use. What a powerful song. I'm just going to ask you to carry on singing that song because I feel there's, there's something more for people here. When you hear the words, you paid it all, what do you think is still owed to you that God has already paid? That's what I want you to go and really, really focus on right now. What has God paid for you?
song called for me unreleased incredible so powerful i want to thank the the worship team for leading us in our worship session so thank you so much feel free to have your seats can we give it up to the worship team please i think we can do a little better than that can we give it up for the worship team and if that's the level we're giving to the worship team what are we giving to god what are we going to give to god come on can we give it up for god right now I love that, I love that. So at Imprint, we have uh, a designated place to give. Uh, we are Imprint forward slash, we are imprint.org forward slash give. Uh, that is a way for you to give if God is asking you to give to Imprint Church. But again, there's no obligation. It's literally what God is asking you to give. Amen? Amen. Uh, speaking of opportunities to give, uh, we have a project called Project Manchester. Can we give it a shout? That's the only positive thing in Manchester right now. For those who are Manchester United fans, you'll know what I'm talking about. So this is uh, us partnering with the word that God gave us a few years back where he said that he wanted to go and plant a church in Manchester. So what you're seeing now in, in London, what you're seeing now in Leicester, 6 p.m., we've actually opened today, shout out to them. What we want to do now is go and partner with this and do the same thing in Manchester. And for that, we do need some support and we do want people to go and be active sponsors of it. Two of our very own are going to be going on their own Joshua and Caleb mission, Tammy and Rayanna. We've got the lovely Tammy here today. I'm not going to ask you to stand, but we know who we are. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> but um, yes, this is an opportunity for you to really partner in planting in a new church and just bringing that improved community to a whole new city. Amen? Amen. As I mentioned, Leicester are back. Today is their first service. 6 p.m., officially launching. So in your own time, let's just go and be praying and just committing that everything that God wants to do in Leicester will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, I want to go and talk about how Cruise and Student Hubs is back. So Cruise and Student Hubs are our weekly Bible study and community sessions where you come together as a, in a group and you meet just after work time, so 6 p.m. to about 8 p.m. in one of our designated areas. As you can see on the graphic behind, we've got uh, MLC and the others. I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. Come on over, see. Yes, um, but we've also got uh, designated crews that are online. So for those of you that can't make your way down into London, we are still trying to go and think about you and get you connected. So please, please do sign up uh, where you are able to. Amen. And as I mentioned, we do have our crews, but we also have something a bit more tailored to all of our lovely ladies in our community, which is called Wonder Connect. It's an opportunity for all of our ladies to potentially get the community you're seeking, the support you're seeking, maybe a bit of accountability, whatever it is that you know you need as a lady, and you're trying to go and find that friendship that opportunity to go and do Christianity with other people that may be in the same situation. Again, we would invite you to go and take part in Wonder Collect. So in order for you to kind of sign up and get involved in this, we'd ask you to go and look at weareimprint.org forward slash calendar. This is a, the, the way you are able to go and sign up. Amen. And finally, I'd like us to stay connected. So as you know, Imprint, we do everything and anything. Like we love it. We love to do things. And the best way to stay up to date with everything we're doing is to actually follow us on our socials. So Imprint London on pretty much any social media platform, you can kind of find us. We also have a calendar, which I've just signposted. We are imprint.org forward slash calendar, which is another place to go and find out everything we're doing. So get involved. I look forward to seeing you at all of our events coming up. Amen? Amen. Okay, so we've gotten to that point where we have a wonderful 
preacher. I say preacher, not speaker, because she's about to preach. She's about to preach the word for us. And I would love to invite my good friend Ike to come up and just share the word for all of us. But before we go and uh, kind of commence, her, I'll, I'll sort you out real soon. Um, I'd love for us to go and pray for her. So, one, we're going to pray for the message that she's speaking to really resonate with all of us. And two, for all of us to be able to find a way to implement it in our lives. So for it to go and resonate with us and for it to be implemented in our lives. Amen. So let us pray. If I can ask everyone to just close your eyes and just pray in your own words, but I'll, I'll kind of lead us in this prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to say thank you. We thank you for the opportunity to gather and receive your word. Whether we are gathering here in person, whether we gathered it as part of the 2 p.m. service, whether we're gathering online, whether we're catching this message weeks, months from now, I pray, O Lord, that it will we will receive it all in the same way, that the message will be timeless and one that will impact our hearts and change our destinies. Heavenly Father, we pray, O Lord, that while we're being revealed your word and what message you have for us, that you'll actively give us opportunities to put this in place, that we'll be seeing ways that we can go and impact our communities and ourselves by the message we're about to receive. And Lord, we finally want to pray for Ike. Pray, Lord, that we, and we thank, her for, thank you that you've gone and raised up a leader in this way, that you've gone and put your words on her tongue, that everything she's speaking is not of her own thinking or her own, her own will, but it's your words, your purpose, your word for a specific individual here that is going to be shared. Thank you, Lord, and we empower her to go and continue to reveal your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, bro. How are you guys feeling? Oh, so we're in a, thank you. We're in a different um, building for the second service, well, actually, first and second service. But uh, we thank God because Jesus is still here. Hallelujah. Whether it's, you know, a building that's like St. Mary's or, the, wait, this is St. Mary's, St. Edmund's or this one, God is still here and he's still going to do exactly what he wants to do. So yes, if you want to turn to a neighbor, I did this in the first service, so if you heard it, I pray that God gives you fresh ears to hear this like this is the first time you're hearing the sermon, amen? So if you want to turn to a neighbor and just give them one good thing that you like about, about them, if it's how they look, who they are as a person, if you know them, just one thing. You guys really got into it there. I didn't want to interrupt. But there'll be time after the service to connect with everyone. So, yes. So I'd like to thank um, Pastor Wale for giving me the opportunity just to be here and teach you guys today. It is such a great privilege. And, yeah, I just really pray that you guys are blessed in this service. So, who has been here for the past two Sundays now? Yes? Oh, full, ha full house. Y'all are real churchgoers. Yeah, thank God. So for the past few Sundays, we'll be speaking about what exactly? Yeah, I caught y'all. Some of you guys said spiritual warfare. Some of you guys said victory. If you were taking notes, you would know that the series is actually called Victory. Amen. So... Two Sundays ago, we had the privilege of having um, Yukan, our bro here, who was speaking to us about the spiritual realm. And then last week, we had Pastor Wale, who was speaking to us about spiritual warfare from the place of the enemy using lies as a weapon. 
And what we can use is the, God's truth to actually fight that. And today, we are going to speak, be speaking on the watchman prophet. And you're probably thinking, how does the watchman prophet fit into the victory series? I'm going to tell you. Okay, I'm about to tell you. So basically, God wants us to have a victorious life. God is a God of victory. And we as his children, we are then called to be victorious. And one of the ways that God does this is through watchmen prophets. And we're going to be focusing on a man in the Old Testament called Ezekiel. And we're going to be looking at Ezekiel chapter 3 and Ezekiel chapter 33. If you have your Bible, that's great. If you don't, you can use your phone, the mobile app. If you don't have the app, someone can airdrop the link to you. And if not, it's, I believe it's going to be the scriptures will be behind me, but we'll be reading together so no one's going to get lost. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not going to get lost. Amen. Amen. So, a watchman prophet. A watchman prophet. Ezekiel was a watchman prophet from the Old Testament. And just for a bit of backstory, basically what happened in was in 2 Kings, we see that the Babylonians attacked Jerusalem. And the people in Jerusalem are called the Israelites. So they captured them and they put them into exile. And Ezekiel was one of these people, so he was taken into exile. So what's happened is five years later now, God calls Ezekiel and says, Ezekiel, I want you to be a watchman prophet for the people who are in exile, but also the people who are still back in Jerusalem. So what exactly is a watchman? It's, you know, it's not a watch and a man put together. I'm not even wearing a watch. But we're going to go into it. So if you're confused at this point, don't worry, you're not going to leave confused in Jesus' name. So if we turn to Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 7. Ezekiel 33, 7. It says, Now, son of man, and this is God talking to Ezekiel. Now, son of man, I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. I am making you a watchman for the people of Israel. So in biblical history, a watchman is someone who is designated to be seated in a high place so where they can see all the surroundings, everything around them, so they can see for oncoming danger and that they can also see for any surprise attacks or any sneak attacks or any kind of... I got you, that the enemy might be trying to do. This is someone who is on the alert. Someone whose eyes are wide open. You know when you've had coffee and you're just like, "Um, I'm ready. (laughs) A watchman is like that. They are on the alert. And if they see an expected attack coming, they go and they alert everyone of what the enemy is doing. Why? So that they can get in a position to defend and protect people. They get in a position to defend and build up their walls and fortify the walls. Biblically, this is what a watchman is. The person would literally be on a tower and they'd watch around looking for whenever the enemy was coming and immediately that they see something coming, they run to the palace and they tell the king, hey, we saw this many people coming in this direction and they'll probably get here around this time. We need to do something. We need to fortify. We need to strengthen the walls. So have you guys ever seen like those apocalyptic movies where like there's one alien invasion or there's a meteor that's coming to the earth. And for some reason, it always goes to to America. So if you guys have ever seen one of those movies, you know that like they always go to America. (laughs) We're people too. But... If you've seen those movies, you'll notice that they will always have like a satellite that's up in space that actually sees this coming beforehand. So they'll, what they'll do is they'll send like coordinates to the White House and they're like, you know, a meteor's coming or aliens are coming and we predict that it's going to be this mo- amount of damage if something doesn't happen. So they alert the White House and what the White House can do is they have, you know, people in position, strategies in place in case anything like this was to happen. So once they've gotten that information, the White House starts moving. You see Denzel Washington. He's usually the guy in the movie. <laughs> Denzel Washington, who um, moves into, into place. And, you know, they start sending armies around and they start um, putting people, mobilizing people in the streets to get ready for this attack. 
And the way the movie ends is usually the humans win. Amen? And this is exactly what it's like when God calls us or anoints people to be watchmen. He anoints them to see what's going to come, to see the attack that's coming, and then to alert people, to alert family, friends, nations, or church so that they can get in a position and defend and protect that church or that family or that person. And I, I make a joke with my friend where I kind of say, oh, you know, being a watchman is like spiritual espionage because you're kind of like James Bond, you're, a, you're like a spiritual spy. It's, you know, it's, it's a really exciting role because victory is always yours. And the reason for this is because we aren't the ones who are doing, you know, all the hard work, all the fighting. God is the one who is revealing. God is the one who is revealing. And when we communicate, we give God room to move. So that's the watchman prophet. Turn to your neighbor and say, watchman prophet. So when we look biblically also, and we look into the root word for the, um, the watchman, the Hebrew word for it is safar. Can someone say safar? Mm-hmm. Hebrew scholars. Safar. And this means the one who looks out. The one who spies, the one who watches closely. And their role is to see the attack and give the warning. It's a very active role. It's not passive, it doesn't shy away, it doesn't hide in fear. It sees the attack, but gives the warning, knowing the victory comes. So in the spiritual context, a watchman is a protective role. A watchman is a protective role. And you know, we are all children of God. So we are called to hear from God. We're called to speak his, his, speak his words. And a watchman is anointed to do this also. So even if you don't feel like, okay, maybe I'm not a watchman, I'm not too sure, that's fine, you can still stay seated down. <laughs> the sermon is still for you because we still hear from God and we need to know how to navigate that. So a watchman is a protective role and this protection is, can be for your friends, can be for yourself, it can be for the church that you're in and it can be for your nation. And we believe as a community that God is really commissioning us as a church and saying, be aware, I no longer want you to be overtaken by confusion, by sin or by fear because you didn't see what the enemy had planned. So the Lord has anointed people to be watchmen and watchers even right now for the church. And as a prophetic watchman, you would guard the church. You would guard God's people. You would keep us safe as God's sheepfold. And you know, this comes in different ways. So this may look like a prophetic teaching. This may look like a prophetic intercession. It might look like prophetic discernment. So really just hearing what God's saying about a certain direction that um, the worship team should be moving, a certain direction that the prayer team should be moving. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. A certain direction that the church should be going in. The watchman really listens closely, discerns, and shares what God is saying. And the beauty of it is that this really shows God's heart. In that God's heart for us is to live a victorious life. So when he's revealing the plans of the enemy, it's not so we're in fear, it's not so we're scared, no. It's so that we can see victory in that. And this shows God's heart for us as a church and for his people, that he cares so deeply. So when we look again at Ezekiel, there are three main things that we can get from the scripture in Ezekiel 3 and 33. And if you're writing notes, this would be a great time to pull up your, to pull up your notes and just keep typing. So we are going to go into Ezekiel 3.10. When you're there, just say, Watchman. Oh, hallelujah. You guys are quick. 
Okay, I'm not technically there because it's pasted on my own documents, but that's fine. <laughs> Watchman. <laughs> so, Ezekiel 3.10 says, Then he added, Son of man, let all my words sink deep into your own heart first. Listen to them carefully for yourself. Then go to your people in exile and say it to them. This is what the sovereign Lord says. Do this whether they listen to you or not. Now, this is the first thing that we can gain from this verse, where God is saying to Ezekiel, I'm giving you a word for people. I'm giving you a warning for people. But first, I want you to listen and understand for yourself. Listen and understand. Hear the word, understand the word. So how do we go about doing that? So if you feel like you have a word from God, say you have a dream, a vision, an impression, or you're looking in scripture and something's really sticking out to you, and you really want to ask God, what is this? There are a few things that we can ask. I'm just going to name out. If you want to write them down, that'd be great. The first question that we can ask God is, God, what are you trying to say? God, what are you trying to say? The second question is, what's the significance of this part of the vision or this part of the word? So you keep reading a scripture or someone keeps saying a scripture to you over the you know, past few days and you're like, oh God, like, why is this important? It's okay to ask questions. The third thing is, why do I feel like this? And I think this is really important for people who you might be um, like a feeler in terms of you, can, you go into a room and you can really feel the atmosphere of the room or you, you just take on people's emotions very, very easily. So this is an important question that we can ask God because God can speak to us through our emotions. God can speak to us through feelings. So Lord, why do I feel like this? And the fourth question we can ask is, is this for me or is this word for others? Is this word for me or is this word for others? And finally, am I biased, Lord? Am I biased, Lord? Because God can give us a word, but we already have an opinion about the person or the thing. And we're kind of like, mm, I don't really want to share that word because I don't like that person too much. <laughs> we're human, guys. We're not going to like every single person. <laughs> so are we biased? Or am I given a word based on how I actually feel about the person as opposed to what God is saying about them? You know, sometimes we might notice like, oh, do you know what? I'm, I'm, every time I'm around a certain um, circle, I notice that this person is, you know, quite negative or they don't really let people speak. I'm just giving a random example, guys. <laughs> and, you, and you take that and maybe you've been thinking about it for a few days and you, you're really angry at the person, but you don't want to share it with them. And you have a dream and in the dream, they're just really nasty to someone, really negative. And you wake up and you're like, see, the Lord said, you are negative, Nancy. I have to share it with you. I have to let you know about yourself. And that's not what God is asking us to do. And I believe even if you, that was a situation that happened, that perhaps God is actually calling you to pray for the person. And we'll get into that also. And we've, these four questions, it's or five, it's so important that we ask with expectation that God is going to respond. Because we hear God and he speaks to us. If you're here today and you didn't think that God speaks to you, I'm here to tell you he does. You know, scripture says that we are his sheep. And when he speaks, we hear his language, we know his voice. So God speaks to you. Turn to your neighbor and say, God speaks to you. Amen. So that's the first thing we can draw from that scripture. Hear and understand the word. Let them penetrate in your heart and sink your, into your heart before we minister the word or give the word with so much rashness and um, abruptness. The second thing that we can get from Ezekiel is the importance of sounding the alarm. 
sounding the alarm. Ezekiel chapter 33, verses 1 to 6. Ezekiel 33, 1 to 6. When you're there, say, watchman. Yeah, I knew this one's going to be a bit, a bit more of a tricky one. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh. Ken's phone is not even on. <laughs> oh, okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, Ezekiel 33, 1 to 6. It says, Once again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, give your, mess- your people this message. When I bring an army against a country, the people of that land choose one of their own to be a watchman. When the watchman sees the enemy coming, he sounds the alarm to warn the people. Someone say, sound the alarm. And if we look again in Ezekiel 3.17, Ezekiel 3.17, God says to Ezekiel, Son of man, I have appointed you as a watchman for Israel. Whenever you receive a message from me, warn people immediately. Warn people immediately. So sometimes God will give us a word or a judge, you know, a word of judgment for someone in terms of, you know, God is really saying that this is happening, but he wants to redeem that. Maybe people are, for example, when we look at Ezekiel, he has to give the word to the people that they are living in sin. And that if they don't turn from their ways, destruction is coming. But not because God wants to destroy them, but because God actually wants their heart back to him. So we have to sound the alarm. And this is so important because it gives people time to respond. So when we sound the alarm, it gives people time to realign themselves back to God if something something had gone wrong or realign themselves back to God if, for example, they've been in a season where they've taken their eyes off God and you're given this word that God is so hungry for you again. It gives people time to position themselves against the strategy of the enemy and victory comes. Victory comes. So God doesn't want us to, you know, I'm really guilty of doing this. When you receive a word for someone and you know that, you know, this is a word that God's saying to share, you kind of say, I'm going to (laughs) intercede. I'm going to pray about it in my prayer closet. I'm going to think about it. I'm not going to share it, though, because I don't want to. That's not what the watchman's called to do. You don't hide away. You don't kind of say, "I'm, I'm stewarding this or carrying this in the place of prayer. You have to sound the alarm, alert the people. And God takes this part so seriously. When we look at the story of Jonah in the Bible, so Jonah, and I'm sure we've all heard about Jonah. If you haven't, I'm going to tell you. So Jonah's a guy. Well, he's not just a guy. Like, he's really, he's quite a big deal. So (laughs) So Jonah's a, a man in the Old Testament. And God gives him a word for the people of Nineveh. And God says to Jonah, I need you to go tell the people of Nineveh that they're doing the most. They are doing the most and it's not pleasing to me. And God says to him, tell the people of Nineveh, if they continue in their sin, they will be destroyed. But uh, Jonah was biased towards the people of Nineveh. He felt that they didn't deserve God's mercy. And he said, I'm not going to go and I'm not going to share this word because they don't deserve it. And let's be real, sometimes we feel like that. Where we're like, actually, I don't want to share this word with this person because I'm not very happy with them. But God's words are very seldom about us. They are usually never about us if it's for someone else. It's about God and it's about that person. So God takes it seriously And when Jonah refuses to go, God causes a big fish, as the Bible says, to swallow him up. For three days and three nights, Jonah is chilling inside a fish because he didn't want to give a word. Guys, may that not be our portion? And the beautiful thing about God is he's not going to, you know, force you because he waits for Jonah to become humble. He waits for Jonah to become humble and then Jonah goes and shares the word to the people of Nineveh. And what happens? The destruction's avoided. And the people are restored back to God. 
And we see this also in Ezekiel, why God says sounding the alarm is so important. In Ezekiel 3, 4. Ezekiel 3, 4, he says, Son of man, go to the people of Israel, give them my messages. And what happens if he doesn't? We find out in Ezekiel 33, 8 to 9. Ezekiel 33, 8 to 9. We find out what happens if Ezekiel refuses to give this word that God has given him. It says, If I announce that some wicked people are sure to die and you fail to tell them to change their ways, then they die in their sins and I hold you responsible for their deaths. But if you warn them to repent and they don't repent, They will die in their sins, but you will have saved yourself. That is a really heavy verse. And it's not to scare us. It's to show that God is so serious when he says, share the warning, share the word. And he's saying to Ezekiel, if you don't warn these people, the blood is on your hands. And this is just, I think it's so beautiful that even though it is this serious, you know, it's a serious thing, it again just shows the heart of God, where he's like, I'm so desperate for my people to really know me. I'm so desperate for my people to not be in sin and not be in fear and not be in bondage and actually be in freedom, that I'm telling you that this is a weighty thing for you to do because I want my people set free. So why is it that sometimes we don't share a word? What is it that stops us? Especially if you you operate in a watchman anointing or you feel like God's calling you to be a watchman or you feel like these things actually really resonate with you. One thing might be because of what I mentioned earlier about intercession. See, being an intercessor and being a watchman are two different things. You can be both. A lot of people are both, but it doesn't mean the same thing. We're all called to intercede. We're all called to pray. We're all called to understand revelations of God and share them. But those two things are not the same functions. So an intercessor is someone who is called to pray. Someone who is called to pray on someone's behalf. And what are they praying for? Intercessors are usually praying for mercy over a certain situation. That's an intercessor. And the role of a watchman, their main function, their main responsibility is to warn people, to sound the alarm. It's a very foretelling role. A very like futuristic, what's to come role. And it's very active in that they have to speak out. You can't hide behind, I'm praying for you, bro, I'm praying for you, sis. Sometimes share the word. (laughs) And in Isaiah 56, verses 10, Isaiah 56, 10, we see what God says about a watchman who doesn't speak, a watchman who doesn't sound the alarm. He says, For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, his shepherds, are blind and ignorant. They are like silent watchdogs. They give no warning when danger comes. They love to lie around sleeping and dreaming. Now, I'm Nigerian, and yes, 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 yes. Any non-Nigerians in the house? Any non-Africans in the house? Come on, we love diversity. Come on, come on. So, I'm Nigerian, right? And when you go back home, or whenever you go back to your respective countries, especially if it's not in the Western world, you notice that it's not as, the infrastructure isn't as great. Security isn't really securing. And sometimes you just have to fend for yourself. So what's really common in Nigeria is for people to have guard dogs. And these dogs aren't, you know, they're not usually pets. Like, yeah, you can be petting them, (laughs) playing fetch with them. They'll look at you like, bro, you're wasting your energy. So these dogs are actually set there to protect the household. 
because what happens is a lot of like robbers and thieves try and get in the house. So imagine you've decided, oh, I want to go back home to Nigeria or I want to visit my friend who lives in Nigeria and I want to stay there for a bit. And you go and your friend's like, oh, I've got this, you know, watchdog and, you know, he's, he's on job. Like, don't even worry. You don't have to be scared about anything because nothing's going to happen to us. The watchdog's always there. And you get there and you stayed there for like a day or two and you realize you've never heard the dog bark. <laughs> like, <laughs> not once. The dog is alive, it's there, it's moving, you just never heard it bark. And you say to your friend, oh, hey, um, your dog, what's up? Like, I've never heard a peep out of him. And she says, oh yeah, he's a dog that doesn't bark. Wouldn't you start to wonder how exactly this dog is protecting you? So if robbers come to the house or like thieves come to the house, what's the dog gonna do? How's the dog alerting you? What, what's the situation? What's the sitch, Kim? That is what God is saying about watchers who don't sound the alarm. The role is to alert, the role is to be vocal, the role is to be active. And I just pray for God to give us the grace to be bold and to be courageous in Jesus' name. So we can't be indifferent to sharing the words that we hear. We can't just say, oh, it's not that deep. Because guys, it can be that deep. And we're going to get into it. <laughs> it, can be, it can be a serious situation. And it can be a really important situation that God actually really wants us to have victory in. So there are sometimes, you know, words that God gives us for ourselves to pray for people. That does happen. And sometimes there are words that God gives us to actually share. So how do you differentiate this word? Now, I'm going to share um, two things that really help me in differentiating whether I should share a word with someone or whether it's for me to pray for them. The first thing is urgency. So when a word is to be shared, I usually feel this sense of urgency about it. And it's not fear, it's not panic. Because fear and panic usually make you want to retreat. But urgency is like, ding, 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 like constantly. And I really believe that this was actually God taking victory from when he'd warned us a week before saying something's coming, but I have a strategy for you. And I don't think the enemy's plan was to make me a little bit uncomfortable during that season at all. But we thank God for Jesus and we thank God for the blood of Jesus that heals and that we are alive and we are here today. Amen. So urgency, urgency, that is one way of knowing whether to share a word or to keep it to yourself. Another example of something that I use to kind of discern is God telling me to share this or to pray about it is if I've seen a lot of coincidences, and this can be, again, a way that God speaks to us. He can, God can speak to us in any way. And coincidences is usually one of them as well. So, for example, you being hearing, seeing the word, um, I'm going to use the same word I use because all the words have flew up my head, a rainbow. You've been hearing the word rainbow everywhere you go for the past week. And then you're listening to a song and you hear the, the words rainbow in the song again. And then the fourth day, you're reading scripture and you see where God says to Abraham, you know, it's not even Abraham. Wow, guys, no one even correct. Mm, Noah, thank you. But God says to Noah that my rainbow will be a sign of my promise to come. That destruction will no longer come. And you see that, and then a name pops into your head. And you're thinking, oh, God, like, why is this person's name coming to my head? And I'm still hearing, I'm hearing rainbow, rainbow, rainbow. Maybe that's God's sign to say, share this specific word with that person. So for me, that's how I discern. Am I getting coincidences about a specific thing over and over again? Or about a specific person over and over again? And finally, another way that I can discern if maybe a word is supposed to be kept to myself and prayed over, is if the word is really, really sensitive or really personal, and the person, I don't have a close relationship with them. 
and they've never even spoken to me about this thing. And it's just a really personal thing. And that can happen. Sometimes God can show you a situation in someone's life that's deeply personal and he wants you to intercede for them and pray for strength for them. So those are three things that I use to kind of discern whether or not to share a word with someone or to keep it to myself. And if you do feel like God's saying to share with someone, find people around you who you know, you know, are actually, they operate a lot in the prophetic. Or they've, they've really, you know, been walking in this and growing in this for a long time, or growing into this for a long time. And they can help you. So sound the alarm. Sound the alarm, share the word. And the third thing that we get from Ezekiel is in three, chapter 3, verses 24, where it says, Then the Spirit came into me and set me on my feet. And what are we drawing from this? That the Holy Spirit gives us authority to share. The Holy Spirit empowers us to share. Because it, it's like Ezekiel was quite apprehensive, as a lot of us can be, about speaking the words that God had given him. And what happened was God literally said to Ezekiel, you're not going to speak for a few days. And then when I need you to give the exact word, I will open your mouth and the words will just come flying out. And he even says to Ezekiel that I have given you a heart that is hardened as rock. Basically telling him, I've given you a heart that is so strong, it's not going to be intimidated. When you stand before these people and you give them this word, that God is saying, turn from your sin, otherwise destruction is coming. Turn from your sin and repent. God made his heart so strong that he wasn't afraid and he wasn't intimidated. And there's moments where you might feel like you have a word from God. And he actually gives you the boldness to articulate that word. And that, again, is just the goodness of God. So don't worry if you feel like you're not able to speak up because God will speak through you. So how does the watchman give words to others? How do we as watchmen give the words? Like what do we practically do to give words? It's so important that we are able to approach people in leadership. You see, our leaders are there to watch over our souls, to watch over us, to help us to grow, to help us to learn. And they're there for a reason. We're encouraged to use our leaders to obey the people in authority. So if you feel like you have a word and you're like, I really don't know what to do with this, share with the leader. Share with your leader. And this helps them to test the word. It's almost like the word is going through a a refining process where you've done your your job in, in sounding the alarm. And it's now the leader's responsibility to test it and to see what to do. So it's like back in that tower again, the watchman sees the attack coming and he runs to the king and he says, hey, there's like 20 men coming. I don't know what you're going to do, but you better get ready. And the king says, okay, leave it to me. So we go to our leaders. We give the words to our leaders. And in doing this, it's also important that we are patient with our leaders. We give the word to them, but we're not, you know, we're not We don't get impatient or angry if we feel like, oh, nothing's really happened with this word. We show grace to the leader. And we have faith that God actually knows what he's doing through this man or woman. So show our leaders grace. Show Pastor Wale some grace. (laughs) Show your cruise leaders some grace. Whatever leader it is, for you, if this isn't even your full-time church, whatever leader is in your home church, show them grace. And that's a way that we can go about sharing a watchman word that we have. 
So how about receiving the actual word? Because it's great to know how to share it, but what if I don't even know how I get a word in the first place? And the great thing about this is, even if you're not a watchman or you don't feel like you're called to be a watchman, these are still things that you can take with your own relationship with God. How do I receive a word from God? How do I hear from God? You might be sitting here like, I've never heard a word from God in my life. But I really believe, and even God says in his words, that he speaks. He speaks to us. He speaks. And I just pray that when we leave here today, that we would leave understanding more how we hear from him, how to steward the things that we hear from him. So because the watchman is so connected to the prophetic, a watchman is a type of prophet, and because they're so linked, the same way that you receive a prophetic word is the same way you would receive a watchman word. So you might be someone who sees dreams. You get a lot of dreams. Just, you can have five dreams in one night. (laughs) I have friends like that, and I'm like, that's a lot. You can have five dreams in one night. You can sleep for a minute and you're already dreaming. Whereas some of us are still trying to nap. Guys, it takes me an hour to nap for 20 minutes. (laughs) Someone someone needs to teach me the way as well. So you can have dreams. Or some of you might have visions. And a vision is like, uh, sometimes it's like a, a picture that you see. Sometimes it's playing like a movie. Other times it's just a still picture. So you might receive visions for people. Other times it's impressions or there's just this knowing or this feeling inside of you. And other times it's through coincidences. You're seeing a repetitive number, you're seeing a repetitive um, um, phrase, like God keeps saying grace, 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 grace to you. And then at the end of the week you realize, oh, I really needed grace this week. Some of you might hear the audible voice of God If anyone does, come and find me and let me know how it was. (laughs) Some of you guys might hear the internal voice of God, which is the Holy Spirit. And the good news is, for every single person who sat here, the moment you decided to receive Jesus, if you have, you have the Holy Spirit inside you. So the same Holy Spirit that's in Ezekiel, that came upon Ezekiel, to say that word to however many people he was in front of, is the same Holy Spirit that is inside you right now. And I think that's so powerful. So you might hear the internal voice of God. You might smell things, you might taste things. Because God can move through our senses, he can speak through our senses. And then you might see angels or heavenly beings. Again, that's one I'm really praying for. I want to see an angel. So these are ways that we can receive a prophetic word, a watchman word. And for me, I'm a really vision and dream orientated person. Like ever since I was little, I was having dreams. I didn't even know they were dr- what dreams were, but I was having dreams like all the time. And I just thought it was normal until like, I think it was my brother who said to me, you know, I've never dreamt before. And I was like, oh wow, this is actually a really, really great gift that God uses to communicate. And there was an incident where my mom's best friend, a few, well, this was two years ago, my mom's best friend was deported. So they had actually come to her house and taken her to, I don't know what that thing is called, jail, detention center, God bless you. So they'd taken her to the detention center and she'd left like her son and daughter behind. And before I had the dream, my mom hadn't told me what was happening. But I remember I had this dream and I saw her and my mum sitting in a living room and they just started laughing. Like just laughing, laughing, laughing. And I looked and I was like, what's going on? And I woke up from the dream and I was just kind of saying to God, what what does this mean? And God was saying, there is victory over a situation. And by this point, my mum had now told me that, you know, this person was in the detention centre. And... I started thinking about the dream and I was like, God, if I share this and nothing happens and she actually gets deported back to Nigeria, it's going to be really crushing. I'll be honest, I went back and forth for a few hours and I was like, Lord, I don't know. 
whether to share this. But just like God empowered Ezekiel, God just gave me the, the grace. And I said to my mom, mom, I had this dream. And in the dream, you and your sis, you were both laughing in a house, in a living room. And I really believe that God's saying she's going to be free and it's going to be soon and you'll be in joy. And about a week or two later, she was actually released. Yeah, so yeah, bless God. So those are ways that God can speak to us in visions and in dreams. And God can show you things for your friends, for your family, for the church, and even for nations. Even for nations. You know, I think probably one of the craziest ways that I've heard God really move, and it's probably even crazier, but one of the just the most mind-blowing ways I've heard God move through a watchman is a prophet called Prophet Emma Stark. She was sharing this story of how um, people who really had the watchman anointing would come forward as part of like this, this group of people who um, really just discern what God was saying over crime. And I think especially in the place of um, human trafficking. So there was, I think there was a specific incident where God showed them the place that there would be an exchange where people would be trying to traffic young kids. And God had shown um, the watchmen when it was going to happen and where it was going to happen. And through that, they were actually able to stop it from happening. So that is an example of how God can speak to us and really bring victory in these situations that the enemy tries to use to destabilize us. Maybe some of you guys are going through something, you're like, I really didn't see this coming. Or I really did not expect to see myself in this position. It's not too late. It's not too late. When God is involved in something, it's never too late. So the Lord can show you things for yourself, for your friends, for your family, for your church, and for your nation. And the best part of being a watcher is you get to see the enemy's plans frustrated. As in completely dismantled and disorganized. So how can we do this? We can ask God three questions. The first question is, God, what is Satan up to? You're allowed to ask God that. What is Satan up to? But it doesn't stop there, because we don't just focus on Satan. We say, God, what are the tactics for this season? And God, how do you want us to see victory in this? Those are three things that we ask God, that we bring to God. And we don't, we know we're not intimidated by when God reveals what Satan's doing. Because you know what? He'll give strategy. He'll give a plan. And it's in God's grace and mercy that he gives us a heads up when the enemy is doing something. You know, Benita was sharing an analogy with me when you're playing, um, what's it, mine battleships and you've got someone in the corner who's kind of seeing your opponent's um, plays and they're like C4 and they're telling you what to sink next and you're like you're just sinking you're just sinking you're just sinking it and the person's like what's going on how are you knowing all my plays before I've even played them because we got a watcher we have a watcher and this is something that Prof, um, Prophet Emma Stark also calls having a military advantage. And one person that we see in scripture who has this is Nehemiah. Nehemiah, in Nehemiah chapter 4. So what happens with Nehemiah is, the wall of Jerusalem has gone crumbling down. Right, it's been crumbled down for a while now. And they decide, actually, we need to really build up this wall again. So Nehemiah, and if he gathers people around, he says, we're going to rebuild this wall. We're going to restore the dignity of people in Jerusalem. And we're going to keep the Jews safe from attack. So they start rebuilding the wall. But then what happens in Nehemiah 7, 4, verses 7 to 15? Nehemiah 4, 7 to 15. It says, but when Sambalat and Tobiah and the Arabs 
heard that the work was going ahead and that the gaps in the wall of Jerusalem were being repaired, they were furious. They made plans to come and fight against Jerusalem and throw us into confusion. But we prayed to God and guarded the city day and night to protect ourselves. And then the people of Judah began to complain, the workers are getting tired, there's so much rubble to be moved, we'll never be able to build the wall by ourselves. Meanwhile, our enemies were saying, before they know what's happening, we're going to swoop down and kill them and end their work. But then the Jews that lived near the enemy's camp told us again and again, they will come from all directions and attack us. So, Nehemiah placed armed guards behind the lowest part of the wall in the exposed areas. He stationed people around families with swords and um, spears and bows. Then he looked over the situation. He called the nobles and the rest of the people and said, Do not be afraid of the enemy. Remember the Lord who is great and glorious and fight for your brothers, your sons, your daughters, your wives and your homes. And when the enemy heard that we knew of all their plans and that God had frustrated them, we all returned to the work on the wall. And this is just the most beautiful analogy of exactly why being a watcher or how being a watcher frustrates the plans of the enemies. He sees that the jig is up, they caught me. Everything that I've planned, they already know, what's the point? Everything I've planned, they've already put something in place to ruin it. And we have the victory. And you know, Jesus calls us to watch and pray. He tells the disciples in Matthew 26, 41, watch and pray so you will not fall into temptation because the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. So God is telling us to be watchful, be prayerful so that you can see what the enemy is planning. And finally, we are not called to be paranoid or fearful when these things are revealed. They're not revealed to put us into fear. But God actually reveals these things to protect us and to prepare us. And I'd just like to call the worship team to come up and join me just as we bring this word to a close. God hasn't called us to fear. God hasn't called us to doubting or to running and hiding because victory can be found in him. I'd like to pray for four groups of people. And if you feel like you fall into this category at any point, feel free to just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift, a real prophetic act. So the first one is if you believe or you feel like you are really called to be a watchman and you want to carry this well, you want to steward this Maybe you didn't know how before, but you're saying tonight, God, I really want to do this the way you're asking us to. So if you feel that's you, as we're just going into a time of prayer, feel free to put your hands out. The second group of people I want to pray for are people that maybe you feel like you've been believing this lie that bad things will always happen, happen to you. You've been believing this lie for a while that good things won't come to you and bad things will just always happen. The second group of people that I want to pray for are those who feel like they have to go and hide away for the next few months. You feel like winter's coming, you don't really want to be around people, you just want to isolate, you want to cut people off. And lastly, I want to pray for people who feel like you don't know how to be there for others. Perhaps you feel like you're too awkward or you don't really have wise words to share we just want to break that lie we want to break all those lies and we just want to pray over you a blessing so Father Lord I just thank you for my brothers and my sisters who are here tonight for those who have stood up in faith and said I really believe that you are calling me to be a watchman Lord we just pray for the grace to steward this in exactly the way that you have called us to in Jesus' name, with boldness, without fear. I pray for wisdom over them in the name of Jesus, to be able to hear and understand your words and discern when to share them, who to share them with. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you
you are going to do great things through my brothers and sisters. Thank you, Lord, that they are going to see victories in their circles, in their families, in their friendships, in the name of Jesus. like you've been hearing this repeated lie that good things don't happen to you. We break that lie right now in the name of Jesus. I just declare over you that those words have no power over you. That the Lord's truth over you is that he has a good plan, a future for you, to bring you to an expected end. So Lord, I just pray even for healing over any area of disappointment in the name of Jesus. Where your children have seen something not shift for a long time, Lord, I pray for healing over their hearts. And we just speak for the, we pray for the strength, we declare the strength to go again in faith. Lord, that your children will see that you are working for them. You are fighting for them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for your children who may feel like isolating themselves. Thank you, Lord, that we are built for community. Thank you, Lord, that we are built for community. That we don't have to do life alone. And if you feel like any of these are you, just really be receiving from God in this moment. If you want to ask God to see more of his perspective, feel free to do that. Lord, would you just speak your truth over your children? Would you show us the way that you see us? That we don't have to run and hide from people. We don't have to be in shame. But that we are called to be loved, to be fully seen and fully loved. And finally, I just pray for my brothers and sisters who may have been believing the lie that they don't know how to be there for people. Thank you, Jesus, that you have filled them with wisdom. Thank you, Jesus, that you have filled them with wisdom to know the right things to say and even when not to speak in a situation. Thank you, Lord, that you want to use them in this season, Lord, to really support those around them. And we just break that lie in the name of Jesus. We speak your identity over them. We speak the identity that we have authority. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that there is so much strength in community. every single person here to push back against everything the enemy is doing. May we just pray for more in the name of Jesus.